One of those who had to flee Amin's regime is Rosemary Chibombo. Now 74 years old, Chibombo ended up in Kenya where she lived for 18 years. Chibombo, an economist by profession, landed her first job at the then Ministry of Community Development and Probation in 1968 after her return from studying in America. Two years later, she applied and got a job in Uganda Commercial Bank as a manager. My friend called the therapist Nakafiro and I, I don't know whether it was a test or whatever, we were promoted to be managers. Little did she know that this job would soon cause her to leave the country of her birth and flee into exile. After working for about, uh, I don't remember, six, eight months, there was a customer, a young man, very flashy. He would come and deposit money, withdraw, deposit, withdraw. Then one day, about 10 o'clock, he was broken. Three men, and they wanted me to show them his account. Because they were claiming he was stealing money from Nasur's shop. Nasur was the governor of Kampala at the time. A standoff between Chibombo and the men ensued. That boy had been beaten thoroughly. They knew how to beat. He came in bleeding. Did they... Bleeding, he could hardly walk. He was sitting there on the ground, shaking. He said, Chibombo, show them, show them the account. I said, I am not going to show them the account. Why? Because when you were well, you were the first person who is going to take me to court. Chibombo stood her ground despite the threats from the men. So one of them said, haven't you heard of people uh, in Namave? and the Mabila Forest and the, the beaches. I said, yes, I have heard, but I will not be the first, nor the last. Nothing is going to move me, thought brother. So they went quarreling. You know, at that time, people had no idea that they were women managers. And I think that is how I survived. As she went home at the end of the day, she told her father and her supervisors at the bank's headquarters about what had happened. It had not occurred to her at the time that her bravery would lead her into trouble. It's about five, six days. The mother of the girl who was working for me came at night and told me, you know something, mommy, you must go. Because one of those men you told us rents at the houses where I stay. And I overheard them saying, this, this manager, this manager, when we catch him, we are going to finish him off. Next day, I went to Larry's, I booked a ticket. And um, I got uh, a lorry, I came home, packed my belongings. I went to see father. He told me it is better to be in exile than to bury you. You go. Before leaving for Kenya, she had informed her husband who was living in the United Kingdom at the time. Chibombo says her husband left the UK and flew to Kenya where his employer, the East African Posts and Telecommunications Corporation, had relocated most of its employees and headquarters. For a young family, settling in Nairobi was not an easy task, as Chibombo explains. So I tried to get a job. Nobody in Kenya could touch a Ugandan, give them jobs, especially in banks. She says for the 18 years she spent in Kenya, she failed to master the Kiswahili language, but her neighbors had found a way of talking to her because she shared their phone. So what I did, when I had gone to visit my husband, when he was in London, I had bought a sewing machine. 
So I started sewing for people. And I was very, very successful. And when the community broke up, my husband became a carpenter. In 1991, after Shibombo lost three siblings in a relatively short span of time and she was unable to be there for their burials, she decided it was time for her to return to Uganda. When I got the news, I ran to my bedroom and started crying. And I started thinking seriously, am I not being selfish by not showing these children their roots? What if something happens to me? She says the family returned to a Uganda that had gone to the dogs. Nobody cares about uh, integrity. Nobody cares about anybody else except themselves. It is at this point that she praised the late Idi Amin Dada and Dr. Milton Obote on values, especially integrity. This bribing, this uh, stealing from where you were working was not acceptable. It was not. You got scot free? How? Most of the good schools in the regions were done by your body. And not in a, a wish a wash manner. But the structures which can stand time. Let us give credit where it is due. Yes, they did the bad things, but they had the good side also. I don't know how many years it will take <laughs> to instill that integrity in the, the population of today. Rosemary Chibombo counts herself lucky to share her exile story. Now, many people did not get that chance. And the late Idi Amin Dada, while in power, never envisioned himself running into exile, especially after declaring himself life president. It's now not news, but Idi Amin Dada died in August 2003 while in exile in Saudi Arabia. Walter Mwesije, NTV.